what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new M600 from Morphine now this is a super powerful mini PC and this is their first Ryzen 6000 PC to the market we've actually taken a look at a few different Morphine mini PCs on the channel from Ryzen 5000 up to 12th gen Intel but we've got 6000 here with those Radeon RDNA 2 graphics built in and I suspect that we're going to get some really great performance out of this PC I've always loved Morphine's form factor, fit and finish. I think they do a really good job. We've got a plastic protector on the top here. I'll pull it off in a second. The whole unit is constructed of metal, and we've got a really nice selection of I.O. here, including USB 4, and that's something I really love seeing in these mini PCs. That way we can connect an external GPU to this. So along with the M600 mini PC, we're also going to get a 120 watt power supply. We've got a VESA bracket, some mounting hardware for a 2.5 inch drive, plus cabling because we can fit another drive inside of here. We've also got a vertical stand. Now this will sit horizontal or vertical. Personally, I'd like to set it up vertically in the stand itself, just so we get a little more airflow because all of the air is actually pulled in from the bottom of the unit. Now when it comes to these Ryzen 6000 powered mini PCs, one thing I love to see these manufacturers add is USB 4. That way we kind of have a Thunderbolt interface here and we've got one right on the front. We've also got two full-size USB 3.2 ports. Not much going on around the sides. We've got a lot of ventilation here, but around back, we've got our power input for that 120 watt power supply, three USB 2.0 ports, one more USB 3.2 port, full-size HDMI, we've also got a full-size display port, and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Plus, they've added a 3.5 millimeter audio jack back here. And like we saw, it does come with a vertical stand. I think it looks really good like this, and it will keep the unit cooler because we don't have any kind of desk blocking off the airflow. All of the air is going to be pulled in from the bottom of the unit. It does have some rubber feet on it to keep it up, but we get clean airflow with it set in the vertical stand, and personally, this is probably the way I'd run it most of the time because we are working with a pretty powerful CPU here and keeping that wattage up will create more heat, but you definitely want to put enough power to this because it's actually using the Ryzen 9 6900HX. It's got eight cores, 16 threads, and a clock up to 4.9 gigahertz. We've got that built-in Radeon 680M iGPU, 12 CUs at 2400 megahertz in the HX variants, and it's based on RDNA 2, so we can expect some really great performance out of this for integrated graphics. This does utilize SODIMM DDR5 up to 64 gigabytes at 4800 megahertz. We can add two PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives and one 2.5 inch SSD. We've also got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 out of the box. Now keep in mind they do offer a bare bones version which will come in cheaper, but you'll still need to add your own storage and RAM to that one. Now the first thing I wanted to do is just pull this thing apart real quick and give you a look at the internals. Taking a look at the top side, this is where our first NVMe SSD is going to be located, along with our DDR5 RAM. This one just happens to have 32 gigabytes running at 4800 megahertz, and it is running in dual channel. It's a stacked setup right here. Actually really simple to get in here. There's just two screws on the back and we can pop the top right off so we can swap out that M.2 and RAM really easily. Moving around to the bottom, this comes off with four screws. We've got another M.2 NVMe slot. Remember, this is PCIe 4.0 so we can add some pretty fast storage here. Now when it comes to cooling, the Ryzen 9 6900HX, this is handled by a full copper heat sink with a larger blower style fan. And the great thing about having this larger fan in here is we don't have to spin it up so fast and make a lot of noise to move more air over that heat sink. And with the stock fan curve and stock TDP while gaming, this does jump up to around 50 watts every once in a while. It's actually pretty quiet for what we have here, but if you go into the BIOS and turn this to 100%, you can definitely make it sound like a jet engine if you want to. Jumping right into it, I'm at the stock configuration. Now there is some tweaking that we can do with this PC to get better performance out of it. But uh, the way it sits out of the box, our TDP is around 45 watts and we do have a boost up to 55. And it does perform really well with this configuration for gaming and everyday normal use. But there is more that we can get out of the 6900HX. But with the first few tests we're going to be running here, we're going to be at the stock configuration. I want to show you what this thing can do just right out of the box. Then I'm going to do a bit of tweaking from the BIOS and show you what we can really get out of the M600. Because, uh, yeah, there's a lot more that we can unlock with this PC. 
jumping straight into a little bit of gaming with Cyberpunk 2077. 720p, we're at low settings with FSR set to performance. It's actually much better than I thought it would be given the wattage we're at. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're right there at around 50 watts. But uh, yeah, the 6900HX does like a little more. And we can get it from the BIOS. Basically, what we've got going on here is kind of a fight between the GPU and the CPU here for wattage. At 50 watts, it just can't supply enough to the CPU and the iGPU at the same time to keep those clocks up. Next on the list, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, with no FSR, no fidelity cast on. This is one of those games that does perform really well on this chipset, and we can get an average of around 74 FPS. Fully playable, and one thing I always recommend when it comes to these mini PCs powered by an APU is a FreeSync monitor or turning VSync on. The monitor that I'm using right now is the new Pixio PX24-8 Prime S. This is a 165Hz 1080p curved 24-inch monitor that does support FreeSync Premium. And really, if you're just going to be gaming on an APU, all you need is 1080p. This is one that I can recommend. It's actually really nice. Okay, so like I mentioned, we can easily get a bit more performance out of this PC. All we need to do is head into the BIOS. From the Advanced section, we're going to find AMD CBS. We're going to enter this menu. From here, we're going to find SMU Common Options. And at the very top, we've got our system configuration. Auto seems to be set at 45 watts with a boost up to 55, but we can easily change it to 54 watts with a boost up to 65. And with this setting here, we can even keep the stock fan curve. Now from the BIOS, there's a lot of tweaking that we can do to get more out of this, but this is just kind of an easy way to up the performance out of the box go from 45 to 54 watts. Now before we get into some more gaming and emulation, I did want to take a look at a couple benchmarks I ran. Here we have 3D Mark Night Raid, looking really solid here at 28,733. And remember, we're set at 54 watts from the BIOS. Fire Strike managed a very respectable 6,563. And finally, 3D Mark Time Spy with a 2,770. Now, I've tested a few PCs with this same chip, and the highest score I've been able to get here is 3100. It was a little over 3100 with Time Spy, and that was with much faster RAM. Going from 4800 megahertz, which we have here, up to 5600, and with this PC, we could add that RAM, but if you buy one of these, you're only going to get that 4800 megahertz RAM, so we're going to keep it like this at 54 watts, and we're going to see what happens with some more gaming and emulation. Here we have GTA 5 1080p normal settings, and if you keep an eye on Afterburner, you can see that our CPU package power is now at 54 watts. This is continuous, but we get a burst up to 65, and this really does help out. That way we can send a little more wattage to the CPU and GPU, and with GTA 5 and the settings I'm using right now, we get an average of 90 FPS. I know it's an older game, but it's still really awesome to see it running on integrated graphics this well. Here's God of War, 720p, original settings, FSR set to performance. Now I've had this issue with a lot of these APUs. We can't quite lock it at 60, at least the way the whole PC is set up right now. Now if we wanted to go down to ultra performance with FSR, we could get a steady 60 out of it. But in my opinion, it just degrades the quality of the picture a little too much. Injustice 2 is one of those games that does perform very well on these APUs. 1080p, medium settings, we've got a constant 60. I've had really good luck with fighting games on this setup. Street Fighter V, 1080p, medium settings, and even Mortal Kombat 11 at a low medium mix, 1080p, runs at full speed. Doom Eternal 1080p low with dynamic resolution scale turned on. So I've actually got this set at around 77 FPS for that dynamic resolution scale. And this is really how you want to run it on these APUs. Even the older Vega APUs did a decent job with that scale going. And we're not dropping down too much. I mean, it still looks good. And we're over 60 with it. Spider-Man Spider Miles Morales did really well. We're at 720p low settings with FSR set to performance. We're right there over that 60 threshold and turning V-Sync on will lock it down pretty good. I mean, every once in a while you might notice it drop down to around 58 or 59. But overall, at 54 watts, this little PC is actually handling this game really well. Look 
And for the final PC game test here, I just ran the built-in benchmark for Modern Warfare 2. We're at the recommended settings, so as soon as you boot the game up, it's going to ask you if you want to kind of auto-config. That's where we're at right now. It does use FSR, we're at 1080p, we got an average of 104 FPS. This game, for being a newer game, actually works great on these APUs, and if you don't mind running this at 60, we could turn some of those graphics settings up for sure. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you wanted to run Switch on this, PS2, PSP, N64, it's going to run it at full speed. We can even go up to 1080p on Switch. I just threw a couple that I personally like to test in here, like Wii U, using SimU, 1080p, Vulcan back in, Async shaders, Bayonetta 2, 60fps. The Ryzen 9 6900HX also offers some amazing PS3 emulation performance. Here's RPCS3 at 720p, Vulcan back in, we've got Skate 3 running here at 60. Got a couple dips every once in a while, and you can see that our wattage really isn't that high right now, and that's because I'm actually at the stock configuration, just 45 watts. And finally, Xbox 360 using Xenia. We've got Forza 2 here, and this emulator is actually awesome. Definitely check out the Canary build. Uh, there's a lot of optimizations there, and on these APUs, you can run a lot of this stuff at full speed. I've still got V-Sync on with this one, but with it off, it'll run this game at around 92 FPS. So overall, the more fine M600 is a great performing Ryzen 6000 powered mini PC, but there's still a little more that we can get out of this. The main thing we can upgrade here is the RAM speed, and it really does unlock the performance out of that 680M RDNA 2 iGPU. I recently did a couple tests with another PC, and going from 4800MHz up to 5600 really does make a huge difference in GPU performance. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. And remember, we've also got USB 4 up front, so we could add an external GPU also. Just let me know what you want to see from this thing next. I don't mind making another video, and I wanted to spend a couple more days with it just to get some more BIOS tweaking out of the way, because I know we can get a little more out of it, even with the RAM we have here. By upping the TDP over 54 watts, and I believe the cooling system here can definitely handle it. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, you know, adding faster RAM, upping the TDP, and maybe even sprinkling in a couple eGPU tests, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the more fine M600. If you're interested in learning more or maybe picking one up, I will leave a couple links in the description. And I'd also like to know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about the fit, finish, form factor, and performance of this new Ryzen 9 6900 HX powered mini PC? I personally think it's putting out some good performance like it is, but we can get a little more out of it. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.